In this module, we'll talk about what is information security risk. Now, risk is a fundamental and very important concept that drives all of the security standards, frameworks, and activities as well. In simple terms, information security risk refers to the potential damage or loss that may be caused to an organization in the absence of appropriate security controls. So that's what the simple definition of risk or information security, is, of information security risk is, the damage or the loss that will be caused. Now, information security risk is a process. It's a process, entire activity in a process, aimed at achieving an optimal balance between realizing the opportunities for gain, which are aligned with the strategic objectives of the organization, what the organization was created for, and minimizing the vulnerabilities and loss which are possible for the organization while it goes out to achieve its objectives. And information security risk is usually accomplished by ensuring that the impact of threats which are exploiting possible vulnerabilities within the organization is within acceptable limits, acceptable threshold at an acceptable cost. Okay, and those are very important aspects. The acceptable limits and the acceptable cost, and we'll talk about those in a minute. So risk is managed so that it does not materially impact and cause loss to the business process in an adverse way, which could be harmful to the organization. And acceptable level of assurance or confidence and predictability. An assurance, a confidence, a predictability, a peace of mind is achieved uh, to the desired outcomes of any organizational activity, which gives the stakeholders, the owners, the management, a confidence that the organization will continue to function and will continue to exist and will continue to make a profit. Now, in this diagram, which is a very, very good diagram from the Isaka CISM manual or the Certified Information Security Manager manual, this, the process of risk management is described. We start off with establishing the scope and the boundaries of uh, the risk management process, and we, and we actually identify what is in the scope, what are the boundaries, which are the departments included. After that, we start the risk assessment activity, and we identify the risks first. So at a high level, you identify what are the risks. One of the risks could be an earthquake. One of the risks could be a fire. Then you analyze each risk independently. And you look at what the existing controls against those risks are, what are the threats, uh, what could be the possible impact for each of the individual risks, what is the probability of each of the individual risks. And you do this analysis and complete the analysis in one, in one module for each risk. After you have completed that activity for each of the risks, and let's say there are 20 risks, and you complete the identification and analysis for each of the 20 risks, you move on to the next stage, which is evaluation of the risks. And evaluation is now looking collectively at all the risks and prioritizing them, evaluating them, and looking at how much they will cost, what resources are needed, and what resources are available. Finally, you either avoid, reduce, transfer, or retain the risk. Now, avoidance means that you stop the activity. Reduce the risk means you mitigate it and control it. Transfer means something like insurance, and you pass it on to some other entity. And retain it means you keep it. You don't do anything, but you keep it, you sign off. And that would form the residual risk, which is still maintained, and the management needs to accept that. And that forms the risk communication and monitoring that goes into the risk communication and monitoring section, and you, you do that, and then you go around in the cycle. Now, a risk assessment is the foundation for effective risk management, a very important activity, and a solid understanding of the entire risk universe is required in order to conduct a risk assessment, as we saw on the previous slide in the diagram. The nature and extent of risk to IT resources and potential impact on organizations' activities is covered in the risk assessment. And this is another look at the risk management steps, you have a risk appetite, which is acceptable risk. You identify and assess. You develop the risk management plan. You implement the risk management plan, and then you do proactive monitoring. Here are the challenges with a risk-focused approach. Now, 
The risk-focused approach, as I said, is a very fundamental part and forms an engine, an engine for the entire security frameworks and, and, and the standards. However, in an environment where controls are absent, where the security posture is weak, a risk-based approach sometimes becomes too academic. It goes into Excel sheets and documents and too much analysis. Um, and and in, in such an environment where the security posture is really weak and fundamental, we should avoid getting into, into too much governance activity and academic activity and actually implement controls because those are the first fundamental step. And the effort should be on the four-step security transformation framework. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next modules. Thank you.